My name is Lisa Miele, and I am the director of the Low Vision Resource Center and OWL Radio. And we want to welcome you today to the online recorded version of the 23rd Annual Low Vision Expo. The Low Vision Resource Center has been putting on the expo for the last 23 years, and this was our very first uh, online version of it, uh, thanks to the San Antonio Lighthouse for the Blind. Um, I want to introduce to you Shirley Crandall from the San Antonio Lighthouse and have her tell you more about their programming. Thanks, Lisa. San Antonio Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired's Rehabilitation Department is a nonprofit providing programs for all ages, such as independent living skills, technology training, job placement, and much more. To learn about all of our free services, visit salighthouse.org or call 210-531-1547. We hope that you enjoy the programs that we're putting on the YouTube channels of both of our organizations, as well as our podcast page. For those of you not familiar with OWL Radio, we provide 24-7 access to the written word for those who cannot read on their own due to print impairment or visual impairment. If you would like to learn more about it, please visit www.owlradio.org or feel free to call us at 210-829-4223. Enjoy the incredible programs that took place at the 23rd Annual Expo and we look forward to seeing you next year. He has hosted and delivered inspirational presentations at thousands of events across the country and around the world. As a broadcaster, he's entertained on some of America's greatest radio stations, both in Los Angeles and San Antonio. He is inducted at the San Antonio Radio Hall of Fame, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, and he's included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as one of the top 100 radio personalities of all time. The city of San Antonio named Sunny Melendrez Community Center on the west side to honor his decades of commitment to youth and countless causes benefiting the less fortunate. It is estimated that Sunny has raised over $100 million for charitable causes during his career. It is my pleasure and an honor to welcome this year's keynote speaker, Sunny Melendrez. Lisa, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And let me say that uh, Lisa was telling me that there are people all over the world watching today, and we welcome you to San Antonio. We come to you from the Alamo City. Uh, our beautiful city is open to you to come and visit, hopefully in the near future. I'm Sonny Melendrez, and I want to tell you I am very excited to be here. I, um, well, when I was 11 years old, my dad built a dream machine for me and my brother in our backyard. Now, it really had a, a lot to do with how it is my life shaped from that very early stage. You see, there are people who are always happy, in a good mood, people smiling, laughing, and you say to yourself, nobody can be that happy all the time. Well, those are things I've heard said about me all my life. And throughout my career, throughout my life, I've found this formula, if you will, that takes you to a place that you want to be on a daily basis to get the most out of every single waking day. I call it intentional enthusiasm. And it has three key elements. Believe in yourself. Imagine what you want to accomplish and be grateful along the way. Here's my story. There I was in my dream machine. My father built it in our backyard. Well, it was really a tree house, but every night as the stars began to twinkle on the big Texas sky, I'd sit there and I'd dream about who it was I would become, what I would do, the places I'd go. You see, when you're a child, you don't know what you can't do because anything is possible. And think about this. There's a child living in every single one of us every day. In fact, you're not just the age you are, you're every age you ever were. Well, I had three dreams. First was radio. The second was Disney. And the third was cartoons. 
<laughs> Let me explain. I found out at a very early age that I was infatuated with radio. I knew that I wanted to be on the radio and someday I would be. And so uh, rather, than, to, rather than wait to be a grown up and be on the radio, I had a little recorder and a record player and I would literally re record my shows, five minute shows, just like they did on the, on the radio. And I would sound, uh, introduce the songs and play the records. And then I take these recordings and I play them for my friends on the phone. Now, we didn't exactly have a phone. You see, we didn't live in a house or an apartment. We lived in my dad's barbershop. That's right, he partitioned half of his barbershop. In fact, it wasn't even a full address. It was 908 and a half Nolan Street. And half of it was a print shop. The other half was a barbershop. So we lived in half of a half. And at night, my dad would give me three dimes. And I would take those dimes and go in the dark into the barber shop, make my way around the barber chairs and go up to the shoe shine stand next to where the payphone was. And I would dial one friend at a time air, 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 and play my little record. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Eileen. I accidentally unmuted you, Mr. Melendrez. My friends would probably just kind of listen and put the phone down and come back later, but it didn't matter. I was broadcasting. All right. Now, after high school, Central Catholic High School, I entered San Antonio College. And on registration day, my life changed forever. It was registration day when it happened that I walked by a door that had a little square window. And I thought to myself, where have I seen a door like that? A radio station. I could it be? I looked inside the window. And sure enough, there was a radio control board and a microphone. Well, my head was spinning. You see, my major, which I had just signed up for, was commercial art. And somebody told me that they had a radio TV department. I made a beeline for the nearest payphone. I used my bus money to call my dad and ask him if I could change my major. He said, absolutely. And so it was, I launched my radio career in that little radio station at San Antonio College. And now I get to give back to that college in many different ways as a result of that wonderful memory that I had and that launching pad. Well, it wasn't long before that I graduated from there and went over to UTEP in El Paso. While I was in El Paso, I learned that there was a radio station looking for a weekend DJ. Well, I got an appointment to see the program director. And before I made the appointment, he said, well, uh, bring an air check when you come in on Monday morning. I said, okay, I sure will. I turned to my friend. I said, what's an air check? They said, that's a tape of your show. Well, I didn't have a show because the radio station at the college was, uh, the equipment was down, so I couldn't record anything there. But then I remembered my, my little productions back at home when I was just a kid. And sure enough, I went into, well, I'll tell you where it was with my, my aunt's, uh, I was staying with my aunt. So it was actually in her bathroom because echo was the big thing at the time. And that's where you get a lot of echo. So I rented a little recorder for $5. I put a board across the bathtub and the recorder was there. And then on the other side was the commode. And on top of that was the record player. And I made this little show. I show up on Monday morning, got my suit on. The program director says, this is pretty good. Now, where did you record this? I said, oh, a little studio that I like to use when I'm in town. Well, needless to say, I got the job. And so I was on the air every Sunday morning from 5 a.m. till noon, seven hours. And I want to tell you something. I was having the time of my life. I couldn't believe that they were paying me to have all this fun. I was making a whopping $1.25 an hour. I thought I had died and gone to heaven. The Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Sonny and Cher, all this great music. I would look at the clock and I would say, oh good, I still have three more hours. I still have two more hours. To this day, whenever I'm on any stage, including right now, I look at the clock and say, oh good, I still have. You see, if you have that attitude of having that wonderful excitement 
about what it is you're doing, all of a sudden things change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so after a while, I started getting these awards. And then one day I got the call from the radio station in San Antonio. The radio station wanted me to come and be their program director. And so nine short years from the time I started making my little productions in the back of my dad's barbershop, excuse me, there I was on the air and running the show at the radio station I had listened to as a kid. Intentional enthusiasm. I believed I could do it. I saw myself, I imagined it. And I was so grateful along the way. Well, about a year later, I got the call to go to Los Angeles. It was there that I actually was on a radio station that was the station of the stars. Big, big names like Neil Diamond and uh, Aretha Franklin would stop by and put, we'd go on the air with them. It was just an incredible experience. So while I'm there, I get a call from an agent who says, have you ever thought about doing cartoon work? Well, let me go back to when I was a kid watching a little black and white Philco TV <laughs> in the back of my dad's barbershop and watching my favorite cartoon show. That was my second dream, cartoons. And it happened because I was watching Yogi Bear. And Yogi always had this great attitude. Hey, 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 I'm Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear. And what was his little friend's name? That's right, Boo Boo. Yogi, Yogi, we're gonna get in trouble with the ranger. Don't worry about a thing, little boo-boo. You see, when you do cartoon voices, you don't hold back. And that's another lesson I've learned. In life, no matter where you are, what it is you're doing, as you start your day, don't hold back. Give it all you got. Intentional enthusiasm. Well, there I was on the radio in Los Angeles, and the agent said, I've got an idea. Why don't you give me some a tape of your cartoon shows, or actually cartoon voices, and let me see what I can do. Well, it wasn't but two weeks that he called back and said, okay, you got your first job. I said, where? He says, oh, here's the address and here's where you have to be. The following Monday, I can remember driving my little 1970 Ford Maverick into the parking lot of the Hannah Barbera Studios, the home of Yogi and Boo Boo. My dream of wanting to do voices for cartoons had come true in a very big way. Intentional enthusiasm. It gets better. You see, I was there to do voices on a show that I had watched as a kid, and now is a new season with all the original cast members of the Jetsons. That's right the Jetsons. And there they were, the voices of George, Jane, Elroy, daughter, Judy. And next to me was Mr. Spacely, the Spacely Sprocket Company. The voice of that character was a man named Mel Blanc. Mel Blanc was the voice of Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, and the list goes on and on. All those great Warner Brothers cartoons. He's sitting next to me. You can imagine how surreal it must have been for me to have the memory of being that kid watching this show and now to be in that room, not just as a visitor, not just to observe, but to actually participate as a talent. It was unbelievable. And then it happened. Little by little, every session, we would have these breaks and Mel Blanc would mentor me. He would help me. He would say, try this, try that. And then I would ask him about all these different characters and he would tell me how he did them. He taught me. Would you like to hear some? I thought so. So here's Elmer Fudd, Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, and Foghorn Leghorn. Elmer's walking around with that funny little gun and he says, be very, very quiet. I'm looking for a little gray rabbit. And when I find a rabbit, I'm gonna tear my pot, whim from whim. <laughs> eh. What's up, Doc? Have you seen a widow gray rabbit? Big eyes, yeah. Big teeth, yeah. Big smile, yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? 
Ooh, I thought I tore a putty tat. I did. I did tore a putty tat. <laughs> you bet you saw a putty tat. The putty tat was me. Why, well, I'm the wildest, rootness, tootness, shootness, yeah, shit it. There you go. <laughs> Now, if if you were here where, my, where I'm broadcasting and you were standing in front of me, you'd probably be sprayed with all my, my, my saliva. But I'll tell you something. It was an incredible experience. And because of that ladder of success, Mel Blanc holding my hand, pulling me up to where he was, I've been able to do the same and pull others up to where I am. Intentional enthusiasm. The power of believing in yourself, imagining what it is you want to accomplish, and gratitude along the way. Well, the third dream was Disney. You see, I would watch the Mickey Mouse Club, and I would think to myself, I want to be with those kids. I want to work for Walt Disney. I want to be a part of that. It wasn't long before, in the 1980s, there was something called the Disney Channel that was being formulated. And I found out that they were going to be doing a big launch in 1983. Well, I didn't wait for someone to say, hey, would you audition for this or audition for that? I created a show and I got my agent to, tell, to take me in front of what they call the suits. The people who are at the network, they're all wearing suits. And sure enough, they were. I drove into the parking lot of the Buena Vista Studios. And there I was in front of three men and a lady. And I had this idea called Saturday in the park. And so I would go from one park to another all throughout the country with about 20 kids and there would be guest stars along the way. And I'm gyrating and telling them this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. And at one point I saw the lady look over at the other gentleman and then she says, she kind of just nodded her head and just, I felt like she was making fun of me. Maybe they were already starting to say things about me. And so I finished and I expected them to say, thanks, we'll call you, don't call us. But that's not what they said. They said, Sonny, that's a nice idea. It's not what we're looking for, but with your enthusiasm, we think you'd be perfect for a show that we are already doing called You and Me Kid. Would you be interested? Would I be interested? I did that show for almost nine years and became the first host on the Disney Channel, the first male host. Actually, I was the second male host. The first one was Mickey Mouse. So there I was working for Walt Disney on the radio in Los Angeles, doing cartoon voices. And I promise you, all that was not by accident. It can happen for you. That attitude of gratitude, that imagination, and that belief in yourself. I'm going to give you a little tip. This is something that I started using a few years ago, and it's worked for me. Because let's face it, there are times there's things that you don't want to do or things that, oh, I have to do this, or I have to do that. And you just kind of, or you're not in the mood. A way to keep yourself on track, to kind of get you there, to get that intentional enthusiasm is to say this little rhyme. I have decided to be excited. That's it. I have decided to be excited. So no matter how small the, the idea of what you want to accomplish is, or how big a dream, Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. And it's really true. And that attitude of gratitude, that attitude of intentional enthusiasm is something that we have inside us. We just have to decide whether we want to live that way or another. You know, Albert Einstein would wake up every single morning and he'd ask himself this question. Do I live in a friendly universe or a hostile universe? And every morning he picked friendly. It's true. The idea of intentional enthusiasm works. It can work for you. Intentional enthusiasm from the Greek entheus, in spirit, the spirit within. And then that spirit comes out in an intentional way. Well, you are only limited by the size of your dreams. Lisa? 
Sunny, that is so uplifting. It, we're getting so many comments in, in the chat uh, about how motivating and um, just beautiful this is. And people are saying that this brings back great memories of growing up listening to you. And of Aww. course, you're your very popular uh, voices got a lot of reaction. <laughs> People love to hear those. Does anyone have questions uh, for Sunny? Well, please post them in the chat. You know, I'll tell you, one of the questions I get asked a lot is of all the voices you do, because I do a lot of different impressions as, as well, uh, what is your favorite? And I, I always answer him, one of my favorites is the Lieutenant Columbo. If you remember that series <laughs> where he was always trying to figure out who did what, and he'd always you know, come back, he'd leave the room and then come back in, and he'd say something like, um, I don't want to bother you, but um, um, uh, Miss, Miss Lisa, um, uh, I just want to ask you, where were you on the night of July 12th? Am I bothering you? I'm sorry, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> that brings back a lot of memories definitely for sure yeah yeah definitely well here's a question that just came in what advice would you have for those who are afraid of chasing their dreams well you know we're all afraid but you know nothing that is worth chasing comes without fear so the more fear you have probably the bigger the accomplishment once you get there. And what you want to do is just take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Chinese saying that translated says, the work will show you how. And a lot of people think, well, I don't know how. Well, guess what? We have something called the internet. You can find a, a, a video, you can find all kinds of information about how it is to do what it is you want to do because other people have gone there before you and they've, they've written about it, they've talked about it, they've got audio and there's so many different ways that you can find out how to make that dream come true. I told a friend of mine in Los Angeles several years ago uh, who was complaining that he had gotten all these auditions, he was an actor and he would never get these parts. And he'd say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good enough but I, I don't get the parts. And I said, well, what are you doing to build your craft? He said, what do you mean? I said, what are you doing to get better every day at what you do? He said, well, I, I go to these auditions. He said, no, no, well, what are you doing to actually become a better actor? So I got this little rhyme. I said, every day before you play, do three things to further your career. That's it. Every day before you play, do three things. And when you do those three things, that's three times a day, 15 times a week, it goes on and on. And now you've got over 700 seeds that you've planted over the course of a year. And indeed, they will take root. And a year from now, you'll say, wow, look at what I accomplished in the last 365 days. That's a great advice. It's just taking it a little piece at a yeah, time. Exactly. Big dreams begin with small steps. Someone wants to know if you still have your red convertible Mercedes. I remember <laughs> you in the downtown streets back in the day. Oh, that was one of my favorite cars. No, no, I don't. I'm a little more practical now. I got out of my uh, my convertible phase, but uh, yeah, it was cool. And that was a, there was a song called uh, Mercedes. Do you want to ride in my Mercedes, boy? <laughs> and I was doing a, a dance show when, when that came out, and we actually had the, the car in the studio and all the kids dancing around it. It was a lot of fun. I bet you wish you still had that for sure. I do, I tell you the truth, I tell you, I, I really do. I, I think this is interesting, especially after our conversation yesterday, yesterday afternoon, uh, several people have said, if you haven't already written a book, then you should. And then the next question is, do you have a book? Well, as it turns out, I do have a book it is actually an audio book and you can actually find all my contact information uh, and all kinds of other things, information about me uh, at sunnymelendrez.com. Thank you so, so much for, for being you. here with us today. You have certainly brought a, a beautiful shining light to all of us today. My pleasure. And Lisa, let me say thank you to you for all you do for the, uh, the low vision, um, 
visually impaired, blind community, not only here, but now around the world. And all of the people who make this incredible, wonderful expo happen every year. And uh, I should also want to say thank you to the, the great staff of the Lighthouse for the Blind. I've had the pleasure of, uh, of being a part of so many different events that the Lighthouse has had over the years and will continue in years to come. So I thank you all. I applaud you all. And I, I'm so proud to be a part of this, uh, of this expo.